mister. That's a mighty fine outfit you're wearing there. You stand out like a sore thumb, and that's no lie. Watch that you don't get it all dirtied up, but you'd be welcome to come back to my place. It's not far, and I'd sponge it down for you. <laughs> don't go back to Jenny's place. <laughs> You'll get malaria. <laughs> Thank you, madam, that you would make a very good job of it. That will not be necessary, however. But your thought was a kind one. We'd best be leaving now, sir. Here, please accept this sovereign as a token of my gratitude for your concern. Well, I never. Thank you. That's right generous of you, my uh, lordship. You are very welcome, madam. Madam, he calls me. Bless my garters. What a gent. If you're ready now, sir, sir. Yes, let us go. What a remarkable man, the Prince Woodville, to talk to such a woman as though she was an equal. Let's find Batty Street. Whitechapel Street. We are in one of the main areas in the district. Ah, there he is. Burner Street. Whitechapel. when Polly Nichols met her death under the knife of the river. Nothing of interest here.
My God, Holmes, it's appalling. And the smell. But what can have happened here? Stay calm, Watson. Note of every detail and be careful not to move anything. Very well, Holmes. They doing there? Some, someone wrapped some meat in this newspaper. The blood is still fresh. This is yesterday. An old foe. It's written to our comrade Jeremy Kurtz from Commando J. Milan, Bloemfontein, 1883. Kurt served as a commando. He fought against his country. The dog's bowl is empty. Someone brought food for the dogs, probably just before the fight broke out. And just after they had been fed, they attacked a man to eat him. Incredible. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. What a horrible wound. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. The skin was deeply torn. It is a dog bite. I can see the tooth marks. Only a dog could inflict so deep a wound, but it appears the wound was gnawed at afterwards. This part is in shred. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. What terrible wounds! The dog in rabid. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. This bandage. This bandage is a day or two. Please take note, Watson. Same finger that we found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's house. Holmes! This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound. What a horrible wound. Size 9. Hobnail boots, those worn by laborers. Size and hobnail boots. The materials tray is rather odd. 
small bird. A small... A pipe with a strange smell. The opium. I, this man could have made his drug here. He would have needed a real laboratory. Piece of a letter. It seems to be a letter of dismissal. A news for covering the war in South Africa. Kurtz must have been following the war with some interest. The Boer War is abominable, and it still rages. A military badge of the 58th Infantry Regiment of Her Majesty and a letter stipulating Kurtz's exclusion from the unit. He served in 1881. That time the regiment served in South Africa. Kurtz was in the Boer War. Apparently our friend Kurtz served in both camps in South Africa and was never a colonel. But that doesn't surprise me. A traitor, deserter and a false colonel. What a charming gentleman. My deduction chart is incomplete, Holmes. We are missing an important detail. Let's return to the clinic and ask if our friend might lend us his morgue for two hours. What are you going to do? I'm between a nap and a picnic. Oh, I've had enough, Holmes. The next step of our investigation, Watson, leads us inevitably to a post-mortem. As you're well aware, in the instance where a body's vital organs no longer function, every minute is vital. Be quick now and procure the room while I arrange the transport. Very well. I will see you later. Ah, Grant, you are still here. I need to ask a favor from you. What sort of favour, my dear friend? Might I use your morgue for a couple of hours? It concerns an affair of the greatest imp... Use the morgue? Whatever for? Letting you poke your nose in everywhere is one thing, but closing my eyes to I don't know what unsavoury practices. No, it's nothing like that. It isn't possible, sorry. Grant, listen to me. I... Don't insist. Where do you think you are? Perhaps because you come from the rich area, you think you are entitled to do like. But here in Whitechapel, it's the real world, you understand? The real world, where we have to take risks. Do you even know what that means? And this shabby health centre stagnating for years, it's a public establishment under my authority, for whatever that's worth. I am responsible for it. Responsible, do you understand? Of course I understand. Good. I understand, first and foremost, that you are a coward. What? A coward, I said, sitting on your backside behind a desk for years, complaining about your fate without even trying to change a single thing about it. 
I won't allow you. And you to talk to me about risks. I, who was wounded in Afghanistan while in Her Majesty's service, and who for a great many years has taken part in some of the most dangerous criminal investigations country has ever known. But as for being responsible, as you call it, it begins your job properly, particularly when one is a doctor and caring for the poorest people within our society. I... The real life? Ha <laughs> ha! Don't make me laugh. I am a doctor too, Grant, don't forget. And I'm ashamed of my profession when I see the state of this center. It's not my... So, your disgusting morgue, you are going to allow me to use it, dear friend, because I urgently need it for a vitally important affair that is way over your head. And whether it pleases you or not, understood? If you like that about it, do whatever you like. I wash my hands of the entire thing. That doesn't surprise me. This is a dismal place. Have you ever carried out a post-mortem homes? It requires a great deal of precision. Don't worry, I learn quickly. Hand me a bone saw. What should we do next, Holmes? Go carefully, Holmes, even so. I must clean the body first. I must mark places to cut. I can't do that. I can't... I can't do that. My notches are ready. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. I can't do that. A ball of paper swallowed recently. liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something.
poison and apparently very virulent. That was a most instructive post-mortem. Man was murdered by his accomplices because of his missing finger. I see. He was overly conspicuous walking around with a bandaged hand as they have been looking for a man with a missing finger. But how did they manage to disguise the murder by making it look like a dog attack? The post-mortem reveals of poison in his system. Everything points to it being a less potent form of the poison we found in the bishop's rooms. This man died as much from the poison as from fighting against those animals. I believe this new version of the substance provokes such a rage that the victim attacks thing in his path, and in this instance it was dogs. We're dealing with sorcerer's apprentices whose creations are ever-evolving. They are attempting to obtain a particular effect, and they try out their formulae on human guinea pigs. You're saying that his accomplice forced him to drink it? No, he took it himself, voluntarily. The poison wasn't to be found in his blood, but in his lungs. I also discovered numerous traces of opium. I'm beginning to see. They mixed this horrible poison with his opium, knowing that he would soon smoke it to ease the pain caused by his wound. Exactly. And such a profound knowledge of both chemistry and toxicology is uncommon. Very well. We know the reason and the manner. But we're really not any further ahead. How will we find the two other men who murdered the bishop? ...to 13 Burner Street. It is in this area. But where did you get that address, Holmes? From his stomach. You see, he wanted to get rid of the address. No, he wanted revenge. I don't follow you. When the man with the missing finger began to feel the effects of the poison, he knew that he was going to die, and he knew that there would be a post-mortem. Shall we go? Sorry, the market is closed. There's no more produce. Nothing of interest here. White chap, read. Uh, 
ventanas. There's our opium den, Watson. Let's go. Good gentlemen. Welcome. What can I do for you? One of your regular clients looked within himself to give us your address. He was very helpful. Oh, I understand. Our clients quickly become regulars. Your friend isn't with you? Sadly, no. He is tied up with his dogs. I understand. I too love dogs. Come in and make yourselves at home. Poor devils. See how the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. judging by the aroma. What should we do next? Poor dead See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Ashes. It's not very clean here. Poor dead Dirty water. This bowl is used to wash smoking tools. Have you chosen where to sit, gentlemen? Not yet, but we would like to ask you... Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Someone will take care of you. The key to the lock is here. I must find a means of getting the receptionist out of the way. Mm, jasmine tea, judging by the aroma. Thank you. 
please excuse us. You can't come in. It's private. Holmes, you talked about making a client sick, but you were exaggerating. Surely you aren't going to force someone to drink. Another of our differences, my friend. You cure people, I make them sick. What's the matter? Are you ill? Hey, mister! It'll be all right. Breathe! The Chinese waiter is busy. We can go. I can only take one key. No, it is... No, it is A ventilation window. A vent. A ventil. It is impossible to get. It is impossible to get out. <laughs> 